Beavers, furry little creatures that are incredibly industrious. Weigh 55 pounds. They are monogamous and mate for life. They can build dams to barricade your other pets out of your house. When they do this, they also make good eating. But today we won't be eating beaver. We will be feeding beavers instead and leading them to build a wonderful civilization in this post-apocalyptic game, Timberborn. This game is about us leading a colony of beavers in a post-human world. Humans have played nuclear roulette one too many times. So now it's the beavers' turn to play. It is our job to manage them in this city builder. I could tell you that the beavers need a bunch of things and for us to manage a city. That's boring though. Instead, I will tell you what makes Timberborn stand out before guiding you through my own finished game. I will take you through my 10 hour journey of Timberborn. Timberborn is going to give us infinite resources. However, these resources take time to manage. And with time, we can run out of water. Without water, our land becomes infertile and won't grow wood or food. There goes our infinite resources. The great beaver god gives and takes away. We begin with very little. Only enough food to survive for about a week and a half and about as much water. The game does not warn you, but you are constantly playing against the clock in this game. We must secure as much space as possible for growing all of our resources. This will be trees and food. But our beavers are more complicated than just eating and shitting. They need a house to sleep. Funny enough, if you don't build enough housing, the adults will sleep in their houses and kick out their kits. Beaver children are called kits. Female beavers give birth to between one and four kits per year, with most born in May-June. Kits usually stay with their parents for up to two years before leaving the family unit to find a mate and set up a new family. Besides housing though, we will need to develop and balance the jobs of our beavers. Our inventors we just built will take up valuable time away from food planting and wood harvesting. Luckily, food and wood will take time to grow. This will give us time in the off planting season to study more advanced architecture for science points to spend on structures. This handy structure is a dam. Beavers start with that knowledge at least. Thank the timber gods. This will block all water flow except what would flood over it. This water retention is our first line of defense against plant killing droughts that are coming. It's important to beat the first drought with a dam. If you don't, it will kill all of your plants in a day or two. Harder difficulties make droughts last longer. However, we are in good shape. Our carrots are protected against our first few droughts with our dam. We can now devote time to science for more advanced structures. Structures such as the water wheel. This generates horsepower from the running water of a river. We can use this to transfer power through buildings or power shafts in order to generate advanced goods like planks or grind wheat into flour. For our first advanced resource, planks, we will want a storage shed with logs and an output storage shed of gears to maximize productivity or else that one beaver is running around too much instead of making planks we need for stairs and other buildings. Well here we are in our first drought. Our dam saved our beaver's tails. This drought is only three days long. Others will get to be over nine days long for us. So we cannot rest on our quest to beat droughts. As expected though, there are other obstacles in our way to solving droughts, once and for all. As we grow in our knowledge of how to produce advanced resources, we will need more beavers. As we get more beavers, we will need a much better form of food that can feed many more than the time and labor of our few farmers' permits. This is not to speak at all about the business of our foresters that plant our trees for valuable new buildings. As I said in the beginning of this video though, this is a game about infinite resources, but limited space and time. 
we need to move our houses and science production to the barren land. We can then have our farmers and foresters maximize our tree harvesting space in the fertile land below. Logistics will become more important. Logistics is our ability to get supplies where we need them. In Timberborn, logistics means making our beavers able to haul the most supplies and build the quickest with the fewest trips. This is where the hauler's post comes in. They will prioritize moving our raw resources such as water, logs, and food to warehouses where our builders can make quick use of it. Haulers take over the basic needs of supplying our water to our storage barrels. Haulers move food to our warehouses, where beavers can get easier access to it. And they will move logs to our plank and gear producers, so that they can spend their precious working hours shaping our advanced resources. Here I make a mistake. Buildings can transfer power by being adjacent to one another, but I build completely unnecessary power shafts to transfer it instead. I could have used this space for extra paths to supply buildings. Don't repeat my mistakes. Our first wave of pine trees have matured. They each will provide two logs for us to build with our produce planks or gears. I try to balance our foresters having jobs to replant harvested pines with our farming carrot needs. With some saved up science, I research windmills. This is a unique technology for our factions, the folk tales. The windmills can produce energy even when there is a drought, but they are unpredictable. However, it is much better than nothing. But we are at a point where we need more than what wood can provide. I need to make explosives so we can make the next weapon against the drought, irrigation, and I need a much better food supply than carrots for our beavers. I need to be able to feed over a hundred beavers a day. This will require a much better food source. I need bread and I need metal. So I clear out a space across our river to plant wheat. Wheat is an obstacle of a plant for us beavers. We cannot eat it directly. We must wait for its longer growth time than carrots. When it is done, we must grind it in the grist mill, which takes power. Then we must bake the flour into bread. But it produces five times the amount of food as carrots do. This makes it a huge multiplier in labor, but it has a much more complicated supply chain. Additionally, we must make sure there are places to store not only the wheat, but the wheat flour and the bread that comes from baking the wheat flour. We also must make storage for logs next to the bakery as it takes fuel to bake the bread. With all of this distribution of wood and food, we must make a central distribution storage point for all of our resources. I put this in the middle of our town to lessen the logistical burden on our hauling beavers. With that, it is time to construct our bread basket. This will feed our entire colony of beavers even when we decide to expand to other districts. I put down a twin set of grist mills to grind the wheat into flour. We will need power from our river to do this. Then I set up our bakery and a storage of log fuel next to it. The final piece is our bread warehouse where our haulers can get the massive stockpile of our bread and ship it next to our beavers houses so they don't have to run all the way across the river. But as you are seeing, I am running out of carrots. We need our bread basket to come online immediately. However, since space is so limited and we will need a lot of logs for a ton of planks and gears, I also need to invest in oak trees that take 30 days to grow. Our carrots run out and beavers begin to starve. However, the wheat begins to mature just as this happens. We are saved by our bread basket. Witness the power of our breadbasket. 
with five times the bread production per ground wheat. The food production shames our previous carrot farming, which is exactly what we need. This will allow us to produce more population for further metal gathering, gear production, metal smelting, and paper milling. This also allows for further labor division. The builder's hut is the only source of extra labor for our builders from the district. They will allow us to bring more resources and build structures faster. With that, it's time to think about how our beavers behave and then build according to that. For example, beavers at the end of the day will go and fetch water and food from warehouses. If those warehouses are far away, they eat into their sleeping time, which can make them less productive and less likely to produce kits. Building food and water near their homes makes them much more efficient in their time. I call this beaver logical architecturing. With happy beavers, we make a new district to start harvesting all of the metal we will need. We set aside a very cool name for that district. Then we make the same food and water efficiency storage next to where they sleep since they have to run so far for work. The beavers will have to gather all of this scrap to be smelted back in the original district. Our haulers and the haulers of metal gathering district will work together to make this happen. As noted before, it is important to get explosives to shape the land so we can build a reservoir. This will allow us to be supplied and irrigated with water for these long droughts. Here you can see the drought drying everything up. This will kill our wheat very quickly. Also, without power for so long without water, we will lose our ability to grind up the wheat into wheat flour. You will see what consequences this will have later, even with our windmills going. The drought ends, but our major source of food is dead. Thank the bread gods for our crispy baguette storage. But our metal gathering efforts are paying off. We have our smelters working full time now, with a large backfill of scrap to process. Additionally, we have our paper mill and explosives factory built and going full speed as well. We will be able to shape a reservoir in no time. Even though it's the end game, I am still making noob mistakes of building power shafts where I don't need them because a building can transfer power too. I am sure it's my beaver civil engineer trying to milk some extra maple pastry treats out of the budget. Anyways, we begin making a reservoir district where we can irrigate and test out our explosives. This district will become extremely important in the future for fighting droughts. We want to maximize its ability to store water. But we will need a lot more science production in order to research all of the structures, power storage, and ability to make timber bots. So it's time to build the observatory. We have tons of planks at this point. So I build it on the river to maximize our fertile terrain. Another issue that is creeping up is how many beavers are remaining hurt. A healer will need to be researched and given a supply of dandelions. Otherwise, these beavers will refuse to work until they die. And the problem will get only worse as more beavers get hurt and refuse to work. So I send a healer to remedy the problem. So one of our largest building projects in this game is going to be the triple floodgate reservoir outlet. This outlet will store water up to a height of three before the water starts to flood. With this, we can store a lot more water and overcome these long droughts. They will also be instrumental for when we create the massive reservoir from the land behind them, but I will need to build a lot of walls for that. That requires more floodgates or timber bots. For increased efficiency, I build a temple and monument to our mighty colony. This will boost our beaver's well-being levels. This is going to increase all beaver productivity and movement speed. 
These statues look awesome. A major milestone for how we have overcome thirst and starvation and built a thriving city so far. Well, we have constructed our first floodgate for the floodplains operation. This will be the beginning of our massive reservoir. However, I do not build it high enough for what we need for making even a basic reservoir. It floods over most of our city. While this does not kill our crops or buildings right away, it can if left standing on our land for too long. This is a damn disaster. It's a good thing the water had somewhere to go. Anyways, the flood wall reservoir still can serve a purpose. We can still store an entire level of water above what we had before. This can help us during a drought to get a bit of power and keep our water pumps working as well as make our wheat survive a nine day drought. As you saw before, this would not be possible without water storage. And when we would have normally ran out, we can release water on about day eight. This makes it possible to store water for as long as about a 10 or 11 day drought. With the drought partially conquered, we can safely afford to have a larger population. I expand our beaver complex to accommodate a larger population of furred civilization. However, just as we have the water problem under control, we start having an even worse food problem. We are about to experience a starvation spiral. A starvation spiral is incredibly deadly to experience. Your beaver population will have a very hard time escaping it unscathed. To try and avoid this spiral, I build more grist mills and try to compensate for not noticing the massive depletion of food sooner. It does not help. We are going to be hit by this hard. lost almost 70 beavers to starvation. What you saw took me several days of trying to correct. I was trying to pump out more food with more bakeries and grist mills, but a drought hit at the same time. We experienced a perfect storm for death. The starvation spiral was inevitable. A starvation spiral is where beavers get too hungry to travel to their jobs and do work efficiently. This happens from a low well-being score. Normally, we were seeing beavers do their work 30 to 40% faster. But with a low well-being, they were doing their jobs 50% slower and moving just as slow. This leads to less food being produced for the same population. Haulers move slower to deliver the bread to the starving population. Beavers are slower to eat and get to their food the whole colony comes grinding down to a deadly halt. So once I get the bread situation recovered, it is time to bolster and diversify our colony with Timberbots. Timberbots are an artificial beaver. They can do any job beavers can, but usually faster. They only take biofuel, which is cheaply made from potatoes. However, they do eventually die when their durability wears out. Their work efficiency is amazing. They are equivalent to about wellness level 30 or 40 beavers. They can become even better with catalyst production. And here we are, our first Timberbot. What an amazing production. These guys are the key to making our deep reservoir. They are the only ones who can mine for dirt and make terrain blocks to landscape our reservoir. I made additional wind power 
but it's just not that good. Wind power is unpredictable, and when our river runs dry, that means our food production is at risk once power goes out. We need something to solve this. I introduce to you our plans to scale the mountain and build gravity batteries. Gravity batteries store power by lifting a massive weight above the terrain. When it is lowered, it turns all of our power shafts. They can store more the higher they are built. So we plan to build them on our highest mountain and dig a pit below them with explosives. But there is another problem caused by building on our mountain. We need a way to get the power transferred to and from this battery that is really high up. So I build the great power pipeline. It will transfer all of our stored power to our main industry line by a massive staircase. It will also store all of our power when the rivers are full. This will allow our industry to keep going even in times of drought. Sometimes winds come in at night this will get stored by our batteries when our beavers are sleeping, allowing them to work during the day. Combine all of this with our floodgates and we have a lot more flexibility in our power grid. Feels good to be a beaver in this lumberpunk age. So, the final pieces of beating the drought are coming together. This dirt mining facility will produce one of the most important resources in the game, dirt. Dirt can be used to make some mud baths for our hardworking beavers, but this is not its best use. Although anyone who has swam in mud might disagree. So why is dirt the most important resource? It can be used to make terrain blocks at the terraforming station. This will allow us to place blocks of terrain and create our own massive reservoir. Only Timberbots can work this facility. The most recent patch, however, has removed this long time limitation. But in the version I am playing, it is still only Timberbots that can work this and the terraforming station. I am so excited. It finally seems that we are able to beat the drought. All we have to do is finish our new terrain block wall and flood our new reservoir. And here we go, it is filling. This is going to be so much water and power for our colony. However, I make one last mistake that I did not know about until I had already built this. If an edge of the map does not have a natural wall, water will be destroyed by falling off of that edge. This is okay. I will just build another natural wall at the other end of the map. Let's get to it, Timberbots. So I have to build a long road from our last district out to the edge of the map where the water is being destroyed. This takes quite some damn time. I even build fuel barrels to get our timber bots to keep working. However, I make another damn mistake here. The timber bots can't turn themselves around in time or drink on the way to their work. So they will slowly walk their way to their destination and then slowly walk back. Even though it took me like three times as long to do this from my mistake, I finish it. Here is the flooding of our massive reservoir, the one to beat our droughts once and for all. And to celebrate our victory over the droughts, it is time to build the Fountain of Joy. This will be a massive monument in the middle of our river that should never run dry. It gives a massive bonus to well-being making our colony extremely efficient. I personally love the quote on it. It isn't a waste if it makes you happy. There is a lot to be said about that. To make this fountain even more special, I build some lidos around it. These are public swimming areas where the beavers can rejoice in their victory over the drought. I want to surround the fountain with these. I have also unlocked the Iron Teeth faction from my beaver topia's whopping 30 well-being. With our massive reservoir complete, our industrial power able to shape the earth and forever feed our people even during the droughts, and with beaver topia able to display their wealth of water and food to the max, it is time to look over our works here. Timberborn has been a fantastic city builder, 
I loved the fact that it gave me infinite resources to play with. The challenge really came from space and time management. I had to plan how much space to allot for growing my beaver population. With that came a higher demand for food and water that I needed to meet if I wanted more industrial goods. If I never built these industrial goods, then my city was doomed by the longer droughts that were coming to steal all of the life from our land. While I did accomplish a lot in this playthrough, there is more to be done. The Bad Water update launched just days before I finished editing this video. It has completely changed the way explosives are handled. It also gives us new irrigation challenges to face, as we need to make sure the bad water does not taint our land and beavers. So what do you say? Should I go through this again? Will we face the bad water together? Perhaps as the iron teeth this next time. I will see you all on the next one. Ave, atque, vale, mal.